Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show. The Rock and Review is on the road at the Good Life Farms in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and I'm thrilled to have on five-time Grammy Award winner, uh, you know, TV host, singer, songwriter, so many great awards. It is CeeLo Green. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, you're working with the song, and uh, it's kind of interesting uh, considering how many hit songs you've had over the years, CeeLo. Yeah, well, modesty first, modesty first. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's just... Um, a really fortunate feeling, you know what I mean? Like to be acknowledged by these wonderful people. Right. Nashville is such a beautiful place to be, uh, centered around music, and um, I feel very comfortable and, and right at home here, so yeah. Well, following your career, obviously, you know, with, with your songs through the years and everything, and as you continue to even work with other artists and also produce, um, it's got to be fun doing something like this with the song uh, to kind of give a little more backstory to your great songs. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think that it's it's um, imperative that people, you know, be able to be enlightened by what your inspiration was, um, the actual origin of the of these of these records. But without ruining the life that it's taken on for those individuals, because you know, I believe that music should be interpreted, you know, by the individual right. and mean like and, and make it applicable to your own experience yeah. or see it the way that you want to see it. That's the artful context of it. And so I don't want to ruin that, you know, right. that part of it, but I do want to let people know what, what actually sparked the thought, you know? Well, you know, and, and I think, you know, we're showing that creative catalyst because I liked it when you were doing a lot of your soul music stuff also. Right. And obviously the things that you did with Danger Mouse and your solo work, crazy. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, wasn't that uh, by Rolling Stone uh, one of the big songs of the decade isn't that what they stated that's what they say man and uh, you know we we stand by Rolling Stone's uh, opinion yeah you know, they're, 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 they're a credible source I think so I, yeah. I think I would definitely stand by yeah. that well I have to bring up to you know uh, as you're judging you did three years on the voice now something I didn't know about you and your fans may not know CeeLo is that you're also the voice of Murray the mummy I am I how did that happen now that's something I did not know until I started prepping for the show I haven't done an awful lot of voiceover work, but um, uh, Transylvania, uh, <laughs> that was um, one of my most uh, memorable, one of, the, one of the few ones, it can only be as memorable as it is because I haven't done a lot of it, but yeah, um, Adam Sandler and his team, like right. you know. I was such a big fan of his, so I was really flattered for him to reach out for me personally. I even think Murray the Mummy was kind of even illustrated to look a little bit like me, you know? Well, what a cool character, yeah. and, and it made me rethink the movie Hotel Transylvania when I knew that you were Murray the Mummy. Also, yeah. that you sang backup uh, for TLC way back when. I did. I um, On Waterfalls. Yeah, I uh, we we all grew up together. We started as a small collective. There was a, there was a time when Atlanta was almost like a close knit musical community because we didn't really have the industry outlet at that time. Right. So we kind of confided in each other in these little corners of of the city in different clubs like Kaya or Yin Yang Cafe and things of that nature. And we all knew each other from high school or somewhere. Right. So it was a really communal vibe there, and uh, we would all just kind of get together and session and try ideas out. And so like I didn't really think much of it at the time, you know what I mean? But um, in retrospect, it's quite, um, you know, a monumental, you know, and pivotal, pivotal. Um, um, experience and opportunity for right. me professionally. Well, and I think also obviously helped them with the song, with the hit song that they had from that. Believe it or not, I, uh, I, I demoed the entire song first. Really? Yeah, I sung it all, and then um, it was presented to Tion, who's T-Boz, right. uh, professionally known as. <laughs> And uh, they love the record, to say the least, and the rest is history. Well, I got to ask you, CeeLo, what are your plans for music uh, coming up in the near future? Can we expect some more singles coming out? Obviously, what you did with Robin Williams was so great. Uh, oh, what, are your, what are your upcoming plans? I'm glad you mentioned Robin Williams, man. It's, it's really special. That song meant a lot to me, and I think that um, it kind of goes unsung. But as of late... I've had a few people mention, a few special people, actually, and this is something I'm gonna say on camera because it's a fact. Stevie Wonder sent word to me through a mutual friend that it's one of his favorite records. Oh my gosh. So, it's, I mean, I love that record, you know, about as much as I love Robin Williams, and that's a thousand percent, right? So, I'm glad you mentioned that record, man, and I need to revisit that and, and make sure that people hear it. Go check out that record, it's a wonderful record. Well, and I think but, it's um, an incre incredible nod from you 
to Robin Williams because what a great comedian. Absolutely. And, and I think that you know you doing that song with the record and everything. I think it helped bring that about. I agree with you. I think people need to take a listen. Absolutely. So. Um, you know that you know as, as an honorable mention but also i've been independent over the last few years you know what i mean so i'm not with a label anymore so uh it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like where i started you know what mm -hmm. i mean because uh initially Niles barkley was independent too before it broke yeah you know what i'm saying and so i'm kind of used to that space to something of my wheelhouse and i kind of i find those those jewels i found those diamonds in the rough when, when i'm just able to roam about you know what i mean do you um, feel it gives you more creative freedom with your songs with everything and then obviously what you did with Narles barkley oh yeah I absolutely sometimes when you were the label it gives life to those little sayings like too many cooks in the kitchen mm -hmm. and stuff like that people everybody has an opinion you know what i mean and um you know, um, and understandably so, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. it is a business, you know, at that point, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, you want the majority to to, uh, to to rule, you know what I mean? You want everybody to be on board about a single, everybody's, you know, sold and ready to go. And, and, and you don't want anybody to support you right. halfway, you know, so. Anyway, anyway, that's a long story, but I'm saying that to say, I've been able to be completely prolific. I've got more music prepared and ready to go than I've ever had in my entire career. Wow. I've got an almost a, a completely done uh, Gnarls Barkley album. Wow. But I won't call it done yet because we're not done recording. Right. But we've done a few um, uh, incremental recording sessions mm -hmm. over the last year or so. And so we have about 20 new songs. That is amazing. I, I mean, that's two albums worth of material, totally. but we're going to keep going, you know, because sometimes, you know, once you get into a flow, um, you know, some of the stuff that you initi initiate with, you know, gets backlogged and oh, then yeah. we'll just have some overtures, some cool B-sides or whatever, you know what I mean? But um, I've got that. I did a, um, a project here uh, with Dan Auerbach from the Black Keys, yeah. totally uh, produced and orchestrated by him. I'm not really sure what to uh, categorize it as or even what to call it. Like, it's like... James Brown doing a, a country record, you know right. what I'm saying? produced by Phil Spector. So it's like, it's, it's really unique. I'll tell you what though, I loved your soul work that you did. Though. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, if that makes any sense to you, but you know, at the, very, every, at, at the very least, it sounds pretty interesting. So that'll be a good listen for people when that comes out too. And that's, that's probably something you're gonna hear really soon, maybe like the turn of the new year. Wow, well, I'll tell you what, you know, you've always been all about the song with what you've done, but I've also enjoyed seeing you entertain and you are an entertainer at the heart of it, and, and you feed off the crowd. I love to perform. I love people. Um, I love the, that transfer of energy. Uh, I love to lift people up high, man, and, and give them life. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, it is my life. It is my vitality. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's how I survive. You know what I mean? Uh, and I'm a giver, and that's, that's what it's all about. And, uh, and I'm an even bigger fan than that. So my motivation um, is, you know, the embodiment of all of those old ghosts that inspired me. You know what right. I mean? And that goes from everybody from Kiss to Elton John to Earth, Wind & Fire oh, yeah. to James Brown, obviously. You Certainly. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sly Stone, you name it. Yeah. It's all in there. Oh, my gosh. I'll tell you what, it comes out. Well, I really appreciate you sharing some time with us. It's going to be great to see some of the backstory on some of your hit songs, sharing with uh, the audiences with the song, the one and only CeeLo Green. Be sure and catch him on the song, and also stay tuned for some great new music coming out, hopefully in the near future, right. and maybe a new tour also. Thanks for watching The Rock Interview. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show.